Welcome back for a surprise edition of Why Am I Like This? All right, well, welcome back. I wasn't planning on having another video this quickly, but some things have changed, so I'll run over that real quick right now. All right, so I got the car running and I had to take it to go get an alignment. So I had the front end aligned, that all went smooth, everything's good. But I don't know if you remember, in the, one of the first two videos I mentioned that it felt like the back wheel was doing something weird, like it was locking up or something. I thought it was maybe the calipers, so I pulled the wheels off, inspected the calipers that day. That was still in like December. Didn't see anything wrong and thought it must be the emergency brakes. Well anyway, it's still doing it and it's still really pronounced. If I'm in a parking lot going slowly, especially if I'm like turning the wheel hard, you'll hear it and it sounds like the wheels like grabbing, grabbing, turning, grabbing, turning. One of the days that I had off work, I took off the rear wheels and the rear rotors, which are also drums for the emergency brake shoe. And I'll show some pictures here. It was a rusty mess. The emergency brake shoe had completely disintegrated. There was nothing left of it, but it wasn't dragging. But I thought maybe it's all that rust. So I took off all the rusty stuff as much as I could, just removed the shoe because I'm not using the emergency brake, drove it around hoping that would fix it and it didn't. So I still don't know exactly what the problem is, but I do know that one of the calipers is leaking. So I decided I should replace the calipers. Well, if you're gonna do the calipers, it only makes sense to do the pads and the rotors. So I was like, well, if I'm gonna be doing that, I might as well get the emergency brake put back together because that the brake shoes are really cheap. So I ordered those and the hardware kit. Thought, well, I should probably replace the dust shield that goes in the back because that was completely gone on one side and on the other side, there's hardly any left of it. So I ordered those. Well, then it's like, well, now I gotta pull the axle shafts out. So I might as well replace all the wheel studs and the wheel nuts. Remember I broke one off the first day. I'm still driving it around with four wheel studs in one side. So I got the wheel studs and lug nuts. And at this point still, I don't know what is making this noise, but hopefully by the end I will. Here's the video of me turning sharp and went slow and see if you can hear the sounds. Okay, well you just saw the video, I haven't seen it yet, so I can't describe what you just saw. But I'm hoping replacing the brakes and all the emergency brake crap and the dust shields and the rotors and the calipers and all that will take care of that problem. And if it isn't, I'm gonna be pulling the axle shafts out. So if there's something in the differential causing that to happen, I'll find out. And that's a possibility. For all I know, some dumb redneck went in here and welded the thing up to go mudding, but I'm gonna tear this thing apart. I've already had the back brakes off just like a week ago, so I know it's gonna come apart easily, but I don't know what I'm gonna get into. So let's find out. taketh away. So this is not ideal. So it turns out the source of that clunking had nothing to do with the brake calipers or the emergency brake shoe. It was the worst case scenario and it has to do with the differential. But the clip for one side is just fine for the right side. The left side was the side giving me the problems and that clip is completely broken. And I found the other piece of it right in here. And look at all the metal around the magnet. That is my rear end gears. So I'll show a picture right here. This is the best I could get of the gears inside there. And you can see it is really, really worn. So I guess I'm gonna be replacing those. I really hope this wasn't gonna turn into a whole thing, but that's the story of this stupid truck. So I guess I'm gonna take off a few more bolts that are gonna go home, like the ones 
for the differential cover. Get them cleaned up and re-black oxide. I'll get this thing cleaned up and painted black and I'll just finish taking apart the hubs on the side of the truck there, but you don't have to watch me do that. So I guess, uh, I guess this quickie video is not quickie. So I'll see you in the next clip after I, uh, I guess buy some more parts. Ugh, good times. This has been a fun day. So I finally got this out and I got the ring gear off and this definitely is toast. I was trying to take it completely apart, but I'm not exactly sure how to do that without like sending pieces flying everywhere. But I managed to take some photos kind of through the holes with some lights. You can see how bad the gears are, but they are destroyed. At least one of them's destroyed. And I think based on what the car was doing, I think that means this was locked up the whole time. I didn't notice it on the interstate because I was going straight. But when turning and going slowly, that's when you notice it because the wheels are trying to turn at different speeds. And I don't know how this whole assembly here works. I mean, I've watched videos on how it's supposed to work. Like these things flip out at a certain speed and grab a hold of this thing. Unless you're going over a speed, then this comes out and then this won't grab. But this thing, like, I don't feel like that's right. Like it's catching, but also spinning free. I don't really know how that's supposed to work, but I have a feeling it's not good. So I've done a lot of research in the last 24 hours trying to figure out what I'm gonna do. There's a few ways to approach it. One of them is to get a used unit like this. I think they call this a G80. I guess it's really common in General Motors, but I mean, this is the first time I've ever been into a rear end of something made since what the newest one I've been into is from 1960, and that was just an open diff. So I could get a used one of these, but it's gonna be two or 300 bucks. For a similar price, I can get a Posi unit from Yukon, and I think I'd rather just do that than I'm not gonna have to worry about this weird business here that, I mean, generally it seems like it's kind of prone to failure. So if I order that unit, I can just pop the whole thing right back in there. The backlash on this, I checked it before I came out and it was good, and I think the ring and pinion are fine. It was just a matter of the internals. So I think that's the plan I'm gonna do. I'm not looking forward to spending more money on it, but if I wanna drive it, I need to fix it. Another decision I had to make was, am I gonna pull the rear axle housing out and replace all the bearings, all the seals, clean off all the rust, paint it black, replace the bushings and the leaf springs, you know, do basically what I did up front, or just like basically restore it. And I'm not gonna do that. It's already September. I would like to get some other projects done this year. So basically just gonna slap this back in. I might replace the wheel seals on the ends just cause they're, you know, $2 a piece and I have it apart, I might as well. But I think that I'm just gonna get that out of the way. And if I wanna go crazy next year and clean it up, I can still just do that again. It's not very hard to, pull out the whole unit. So that's kind of where things stand. I think I'm gonna cut this video off because I'm gonna have to order these parts and I guess we're gonna have another part to this project that I thought was done for the year. So uh, thanks for tuning in to the latest video and I guess there'll be a part 13 coming soon. Thanks for watching.